The topic of ethical mining is becoming more and more important in the world of today. We can perceive that our clients, our commercial clients, and also the general public is more aware of these kind of topics. Publications from journalists about the fact that, for example, the lapis lazuli mining in Afghanistan is actually financing Tal Taliban forces and is financing war. And also publications about the fact that the emerald mining in Colombia basically is in the hands of a drug lord have raised awareness that uh, we have to be more consciousness, uh, conscious about where we get our crystals and stones from. So as there comes an increasing pressure and attention to this kind of topics, mining operations all around the world will have to adapt and will have to clean up their act. So that's very important, yes. If you forget about the fact uh, of mining in war zones, because Peru, where we are, is a peaceful country with an established democracy uh, and no war going on. So mining here uh, does not fall in the problematic category of, of that kind of mining. However, uh, there are other aspects that you have to take into consideration and one of the most important is probably children work in mining areas. So Peru has made a lot of effort in these last years in this kind of area. Uh, they have established laws that effectively prohibit the work of children in mining areas and to my knowledge these laws are complied with in Peru. Also they have a long year uh, effort to register so-called artisanal miners, small-scale miners. They have to get a license in Peru. Uh, they have to comply with certain criteria in the use of dynamite, etc. And they have to have agreements with landowners and communities before they can start mining uh, in such areas. So there is a great effort in Peru to uh, take to get this illegal, informal, unregulated mining into a legal framework. So, so I think we have we have made good advances uh, advances in in that area. Nevertheless, there's always uh, room for improvement, and there's lots of things that mining companies and that our company is actually doing in order to get to even better results. Uh, some of the problems we have, especially in crystal mining, which is basically small scale mining done by artisanal miners, not big or medium scale uh, mining companies. So one of the problems is that these miners are not working on their uh, contracted scheme. It means they, they make their own mining and then they sell their raw material to uh, intermediate uh, mineral and crystal collectors which then provide this material to uh, lapidary workshops in Peru. However, the problem is, as there is no contract established, these miners, they don't have any labor benefits. Uh, they're working for themselves, means they have no health insurance, and mining is very difficult and very dangerous. So if something happens to them, basically that's it. They don't have a chance to get health. Uh, they cannot go to a hospital, they have no insurance. They also don't have any retirement uh, uh, reserves, so once they start, stop working, they're basically depending on their children. Um, then uh, they also don't have holidays, of course. They don't have any labor benefits uh, a regular miner in a company would, would have. And, and that is a big problem in, in our point of view, uh, because it really uh, condemns miner to stay poor. Uh, they just have to have a bad month and their investment in mining goes wrong and their, and their vein gets caught and they don't get another uh, stone out of there and they're basically bankrupt. So many of these miners are highly in debt, uh, depend on the crystal buyers and whenever you cr uh, create dependencies you're on the way uh, to the dark side, let's say it that way. So what we're trying to do is, uh, as a company, establish our own mining operations and actually hire the miners for a salary that is independent of the fact if they find or not find stone in this particular month. So we give them a job that is secure, that has all the uh, labor benefits everybody in any country, uh, developed country would expect to have when he works. And uh, that way 
uh, we are creating a legally established, formal, clean and social responsible mining operation. Well, the thing is that everybody, when we talk about ethical sourcing of crystals, everybody thinks in the mining part. And that's important. But there is a second part, and that is the lapidary workshop. It means the workshop where actually the raw material from the mines gets converted into what we, what we then later on buy in the, in the crystal shop. It means the sphere, the heart, the tumbled stone. And uh, what happens here uh, is very concerning to us. I mean, we're very concerned about that because we don't think that in Peru we have a adequate uh, social responsible system being established. Basically the reality of laboratory work in Peru is as follows. You have the legally established companies that are exporting the finished products, the exporters, the wholesalers, the providers, the Peruvian companies that need to be legally established because they make exportation. So they have to uh, deal with custom services, with uh, tax services. They are established companies. Uh, However, none of these companies has its own lapidary workshop. It means it's all outsourced. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with outsourcing a service. Uh, that's not the problem, as long as you are outsourcing to a legally established company. But that is not happening. None of the lapidary workshops in Peru is a legally established company. It means none of these workshops has a permit from the municipality to actually operate uh, as a company in the area where they are. Um, and they are not registered with the tax officials. It means they don't pay taxes. Uh, they are not operating like a company. Uh, the, the payments from the exporters to these companies is basically cash, hand in hand. Uh, and also, as they are not established as companies, the workers in these laboratory workshops are not hired with an official contract. They basically come, they work and they get paid by the kilo that they can make per day. They work slow, they have to work a lot of hours to earn money and if they work fast, they earn a little bit faster. However, as they don't have a contract, they don't get any labor benefits. Uh, like in illegal informal mining, they don't have health insurance, they don't have retirement payments, they don't have holidays. If they get sick, it's their problem. Uh, if they get handicapped by an accident, they have lost their job effectively. And, and of course, if you do that, if you operate like that, then your, your costs of producing the product are very low. And that is one of the reasons why, why products from Peru are so cheaply sold in the crystal shops. I mean, it's the same like in Madagascar, uh, where we have the same system, like in, in India and China, where we have very similar systems to that. So if you go to, into a crystal shop and your crystal is very cheap, then you should ask yourself why. And, and what I'm telling you is basically one of the, the answers to that question. Uh, if you have a production that's basically based on companies that are not registered, that are not paying labor benefits, they're not paying taxes, then of course your product is cheap. Now, the, the problem with this for, for a company like us is that we're now uh, confronting a system where as a legally established company we do have to pay taxes, we do have to pay labor benefits and we're happy to do that because that's the right thing to do. But of course our products, by including all these costs, are obviously more expensive. So the, the problem of Gemma Peru from the beginning was to establish itself as a legal company giving all these benefits, uh, these ethically needed benefits to the workers while surviving in an environment of cheap competition. So clearly the only solution we have to that, and, and we're doing that with, with a lot of success I have to say, is to go for quality. All our products are high quality so that the quality justifies actually the price and the price is the just price because we have to pay all these benefits. So uh, I think it's very important as a consumer to actually look at pricing in a crystal shop. And uh, if you wonder sometimes that products are a little bit more expensive than others, then it's probably because it comes from companies that are legally established. 
So you as a consumer, you have a choice to make, and you have a choice. You, it's your consume choice, your, your uh, choice on what you buy that will give the way to legally established quality companies or to keep supporting a system that is in fact abusive for the workers in that system. So I believe that the current tendency of many of our clients to require ethically sourced and ethically worked uh, products is a very very good thing to make this world a better world and everybody can take part in this by just being aware of the facts and conscience and making the right consumer choices.